Today I want to talk about pushing color and simplifying values. Um, I think simplifying values kind of makes sense. We're trying to make things more simple, make them more paintable. And the best way to do that is to have fewer uh, and more simple value patterns. Not a lot of little details, little value changes. But pushing color is kind of a different idea in that when I say push color, that means I want to push the color to um, best do what I want it to do. In other words, if it's a bright sunny day, I'm going to push the color maybe a bit warmer in the uh, sunlit areas and a bit cooler in the shadows. If I want to show more depth in my painting, I'm going to push the color a little more muted, a little cooler in the distance. So pushing and pulling the color to say what I want to say in the painting, especially if we're using photography, um, not copying it exactly, just thinking in terms, I mean, the, the photograph should be just a guide, a kind of a starting place color-wise, give you an idea of color. But then we should take the color and again, push it, pull it to make it say what we want to say. So let's get started here. I've had some paintings and photographs together that I use. This is a photograph from Southern Utah, and this is late in the evening. And generally, if I'm photographing and or painting, I'm going to be taking photographs or painting early morning, later in the afternoon. Midday, uh, the values and colors can go kind of flat, depending on where you are, especially, but in time of year. But this is in the summer. Later in the afternoon, the shadows get bigger. The shadow patterns become bigger. The big light patterns become bigger. In other words, there's not as much halftone. There's more big shadow, big light areas. It creates more drama in your painting. So those are the better times to paint or photograph. And this does have big, simple shadow patterns. The dark foreground, the dark light area here in the middle ground, the light and the dark in the background. I mean, it's, it's set up really well, kind of abstract patterns of dark and light. Now we get overly caught up in uh, this stuff. You know, all the little detail in the, in the water, all the details going on in here. But for as long as you can, just work on getting the right value relationships of these big patterns of dark and light. Then that way you can adjust values better and you can also think through the color better. But the minute we start thinking detail, all the ripples in the water and the blades of grass, all the stuff, little branches, painting's gonna go south and color becomes really hard. So here's the painting. You can see I've changed the color quite a bit. Color is pretty much just a choice. Look at the photograph again. Of course, I've zoomed in a lot. I've cut out a lot of the right side, the left side, and some of the foreground in the photograph and kind of zoomed in a bit more. And I, I'm thinking in terms of just general color. When I look at these cliffs, photograph cliffs, you know, they're, they're kind of a reddish orange. I made them a yellow orange and then Pick the color close to the complement. I picked kind of a bluish, blue to blue violet, and then muted it with a little yellow orange. So if there's yellow orange in the light area, there's gonna be at least a little bit of yellow orange in the shadow area. So kind of a blue violet and yellow orange for shadow. They're close to complements, uh, or close to being complements. And then the yellow orange has some blue violet in it, also some viridium, but. Uh, that kind of mutes some of the yellow orange, so it's not real bright and intense. It is a rock. It's not um, it's not a yellow painted house, so I have to mute it slightly. And usually we're using the complement. <clears throat> Same thing with the green trees. I got a yellow green in the sunlight, blue green in the shadow. I mean, keep your color ideas simple, but push the temperature to suggest the sunlight. And then also pushing the values a little lighter as they go back. The shadows back in here aren't nearly as dark as the shadows here, here, especially in here. And then darkest here in the foreground. Moving on to the next one. This is some old adobes with um, cottonwood trees. Again, nice sunlight. This is early in the morning, so I have more shadow, big shadows, big light areas, less halftone. 
you get more halftone on a cloudy day and less strong darks and lights. So the shadows on a cloudy day tend to hover more towards the middle value. Shadows on a bright sunny day are going to be more towards the dark area and lights more towards the lights and a lot less middle value. This allows me to keep things big and simple. And then looking at the painting, I'm pushing the shadows cool. Again, I'm just thinking violet in here. Violet muted with warmer colors, oranges, yellow ochres, uh, blue greens in here, red violet here, kind of a, a, a green and viridian and alizarin crimson in there. I think it's too dark. This gets too dark in there. So long as I'm keeping it cool, so I'm pushing the temperature in here. It's a grayed bluish green or viridian. So I, I use alizarin crimson, not really the complement, but close to it, and it mutes that viridian nicely. Same thing with the red here. So again, think in terms of how to push the color to suggest the light, show the distance, making everything a lot cooler back in here, back in here. I don't worry about showing any kind of yellow leaves in the background, yellow, green, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, because I want them to stay back there. So I'm using just muted blue, blue, violet, maybe blue, green, and that keeps them in the distance. So again, pushing the color to make it say what I want it to say. This one is in um, Arizona. Again, somewhat early morning, getting maybe 10.30 or so. So the, the sun is starting to get overhead and starting to flatten out a little bit, but still have nice big shadows here. But there's a lot here to pick and choose from. You know, I like the rock here. I like this stuff over here and this junk over here. But you have to decide what's the most important thing. So for me, I just pick an area. I want this area, then I want this tree. Everything else is secondary. So I'm going to kind of really work on eliminating things. That's sometimes the hardest thing about painting is, is, is what to eliminate when you have a subject with just so much stuff going on. And I'm going to push the color to really show the distance back in here and then the bright warm sunlight hitting in the middle. That's what I care about when I'm thinking about this green and this kind of orange dirt is that it's full of sunlight. So I need to use colors that suggest that. So here I've zoomed in a bit, and again, pushing the temperature cooler in the shadows. I got a lot of color in these shadows, but it has to read as a bluish green to stay in the shadow because it's green grass. So shadow, I'm gonna push bluer. I may add a lot of color into it, but that blue green has to dominate in the shadow. Same thing on the yellow cottonwood here. I got a variety of color in the yellow leaves uh, some yellow, a little bit of yellow green, yellow orange, but that yellow has to dominate because that's what's going to make it look sunlit. I mean, aside from being the, the local color of the leaf is yellow, it's also what makes it look really sunlit. Same thing in the shadow, it's, it's cad yellow light and orange with violet. I'm not going to add blue to the yellow to make it dark and cool because that would just turn green. But violet works real well. If you have a violet or a tubed violet that's more of a, a, a neutral violet and not too blue violet or too red violet, it'll work well. If you get a violet that's just has too much blue in it, it'll turn green. But that has to dominate the violet and yellow. And same thing, the trees back in here really pushing them cool. That uh, blue, blue green, a little bit of blue violet. You can see the distant hills back in there. Definitely cooler than anything else but you might see too much warmth in there if you're trying to match the photograph. So I went with a little bit of yellow ochre in here, but most of it's blue, blue, green, and really blue in the shadows back there. Now everything's slightly muted. Nothing's real strong in color. Some areas are, are stronger than others, but everything at least has a tiny bit of the complement. Even the yellows in here have a slight bit of, of violet. That way I can control where I want my brightest color. It will be in the trees, horses, foreground grass, wherever I want it to be. Now this is near Cody, Wyoming, Shoshone River, looking out for grizzly bears here as I'm 
doing some painting. But again, I took a photo here and, and, and went back to the studio. And, um, more midday, so shadows aren't very long, but there's still nice shadow areas here. I find if I can look somewhat into the light, you know, not directly into the light, but the sun is in front of me, and that's going to give me more variation in the shadows. If the sun is directly behind me, the shadows are going to be a little flat, not enough variation. But when the sun is in front, you get this atmospheric look in the distant shadows. Plus, you get just more shadows in the upright objects like the trees are dark, the cliff is dark, and the flat areas tend to be more sunlit. Not that I never paint with the sun behind me, uh, but it does kind of flatten out the subject a bit more. So here's the painting, kind of zoomed in a little bit, add a lot more color in the shadows. Shadows aren't quite as dark as in the photograph. A little darker here, a little duller. I do have muted gray color in the shadow area here, but not as much as the photograph. And to me, this is kind of a red violet. So alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and then probably orange to kind of mute it. Using the orange as somewhat the complement uh, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, which makes the violet. And the background mountains just pushing those cooler temperatures cooler colors in the, shad in the shadows and simple light values and warm in the, in the background. In the background, I want these cliffs warm, but they can't be as warm as anything in the foreground. So th these sunlit cliffs can't be as warm as the aspens, which they're obviously not, but it can be as warm as the grass either. The grass isn't real bright, but the cliffs have to be at least lighter meaning I'm adding more white to those background cliffs, and that's going to mute the color a little bit. Anytime you add white to something, it's going to at least kill the color slightly. And the more white you add, the more it kind of deadens the color. So I added enough white back here to orange to get it uh, fairly muted, but still looking warm. And probably have a bit of violet in it, but not much. And the violet and orange in the shadows and then the blue green for the trees and the shadows back here. And then as things come forward, they get a lot warmer. Now, again, we look at the finished product and we see the colors and the brushwork and the little dots and dashes in the water. And that's what we become enamored with. How do we do that? But that's the least important. For so long, I was so enamored on how to finish a painting. I didn't realize that it was the first half of the painting that's the most important. In fact, you can stop after the first half of the painting if you have those big shapes, big values, the right value relationship, the right color temperature. It's, it's going to work at that level. It may not have all the details in it, but it's going to work. Uh, so focus on that first. And I think out of that, um, the finish or the detail kind of comes second nature. It's so much easier to figure out how to finish, how to add detail, once you can get the big shapes simplified and have the right value and um, color relationships. That will do it. I hope that was helpful, um, trying to understand the idea of, of, especially working with photographs, how to pick colors to um, uh, say what you want to say in the paint. In other words, show the sunlight, shadow, depth. Um, so. If that does help, go ahead and subscribe and like. And if you want to uh, continue with the idea of color, this next video here is, is how to mix green.